All right. All right. We're live. Well, well, sort of. This is. Yeah. Um, we were talking about everything that's going on, or we were going to talk about stuff that's going on. Go ahead. Let it rip. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't have a, I guess what I was just saying to you before is that I think it's an important time to focus on uh, what's going on inside or what's going on in, in here versus more information about what's going on out there. Or what could it all mean? There's so much information about the different real truths or deep truths or the dark stuff that's happening behind coronavirus or behind the scenes. And I've watched several of those with my oldest. She's 18 now, as you know. Um, and it just seems to be like a, a step. So it's like people need to hear the truth as hard as it might be. But I'm concerned um, that we'll get stuck there. That it's like, oh my God, it's the apocalypse. It's the end of the world. All these terrible things are happening. And, you know, it just seems like this is the time for a paradigm shift. And either we're going to move into maybe this is what we've been waiting for, the, the fall of the construct of money. Yeah, e economic systems are collapsing. Um, wars, rumors of wars. Life as we know it is different. And that could go on a path of, you know, anxiety, fear, hoarding, uh, uh, continuing this lack matrix that we're always like fighting for what we want or competing, or it could be an opportunity to just go in and say, you know, was that system really working for any of us? And if not, why not? And what could work if perhaps what's happening is an actual clearing out of this idea or reality of dark overlords controlling everything and terrible evil people. Not to say that that's not real or true, but how long do we live in the reality of that's real or true and we're in lack and we're stuck and we're fucked because there's this dark thing controlling all of us. So to me, it's just been a neat time to, it's not about La La Land or, I mean, as you know from our time of knowing each other, I tend to be, yes, okay, that's nice, but I want to be in the happy-go-lucky side of it, and somewhat to a fault, you know, I've learned that I need to also honor the truth and the fears that are real and present, but to me, it's yes and, and that's part of the and healing stuff for, on my website, it's like, okay, and <laughs> what if we use all of that energy and that imagination while we're sitting here bored anyway? to imagine La La Land. Why are we so afraid to imagine La La Land and yet we're perfectly fine with imagining worst case scenario? Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff. I'm gonna do a podcast. Um, I was gonna do it by myself. We'll see how this one rolls out or if whatever this is. But like Return of the Mystic is gonna be the name of it. Yeah. And part of it is I haven't done one for a while. I just so it's but it's also not just like calling myself a mystic and, I, and here i am to return right. to lord ryan has to arrived. Bestow my wisdom <laughs> upon the masses and uh, bless <laughs> them with my presence again it's part of that partly that well, but we're all coming too right <laughs> yeah but also like i see some people like from different uh it's like, like spiritual points of view whether it's like, see this stuff that's happening now, it's because you're not um, putting Jesus first. This is why God right. is punishing us, because you're not putting Jesus first. And then, okay, scroll a little bit. The reason why this stuff is happening is because you're not um, putting Mother Earth first. So the Earth right. is punishing us. Yeah. So Jesus, it's upset. So he's um, killing people that are old and sick because of oil or something. I don't know. I don't quite put it all together, but, and then you have the other people that are like, we're not treating mother earth right. And then you have, uh, and it just kind of goes down this, that, that kind of trail. Like, so 
like pick a religion and then they have their own little God is punishing the earth is because of the way that we're living. Right. But was earth better? Was life better before these things that cause pollution? I, th I think, and it seems to be a lot of evidence that life is better now than it has ever been. And the places that have like the most pollution, if you're living off of garbage, if you and your kids are sort of like, it doesn't t it's not hard to find those places where a, a family, kids and parents are um, digging through trash dumps, trying to find something to eat or something mm -hmm. to use to make a shelter. That's not some like crazy bad movie. That, that's happening right now. You look at Brazil, China sucks, Brazil sucks, Africa sucks, Mexico sucks. All those places are in, are in horrible conditions. And it's not because of some uh, white guy drilling for oil. It's the because they, they don't have this uh, access to money. So when you see like the, there's this, I don't know if he's still in high school or if he just started it in high school, but this uh, young, young man, uh, regardless, I think he lives in, I think he's from Europe somewhere. He might be from here, but I think he might be from, he was on Joe Rogan, I can't remember his name. But he's uh, um, designing that uh, ocean cleanup. Like there's that big mass of garbage in the ocean, but it all like is together, but it's like as big as Texas. Oh yeah. So he's uh, designing and helping design ways to clean that up. And it, it's working slowly, but they put the thing out, the one, the two ships and it's like, oh, there's this problem, okay. And so before they just make 50 of them that are all gonna have problems, they make like two. Let's see what this does. Oh, this is what really happens when we try that, we need to adjust. Now we've improved it, now let's make five. Okay, now we have these problems and then it's okay, before we make, so it has, it's gonna like clean up this ocean and he showed um, like rivers, so like what can be done now and he's, they're like showing videos of this place. I think it was in Brazil or South America somewhere. And it's like, if you live in a village where they don't have, like every week, you know, there's this, magically, you take your trash out to the, to the street and it disappears. And you have this nice clean neighborhood. And every week, that's what you do. You take the trash out and or you go throw it in the dumpster and yeah. And magically it disappears um, every week and you have this nice clean neighborhood. There's a lot of places that don't have this magical thing happen where somebody comes and takes your garbage and puts it where the garbage is, uh, you know, a better place for the garbage. So they have all this garbage. So, well, there's the river. We don't live in the river. So they take the garbage and they throw it in the river. Straight garbage, everything, and it gets thrown in the river. That's not like just this one obscure place. That's a very common thing. You take your trash to the river and then it disappears that way. It goes <laughs> downstream. It's kind of the, a similar thing. So they're living in, the, in these slums and it's not the technology's fault. It's not ad advancement's fault. It's the lack of it that, okay, so it doesn't mean that their government doesn't have corruption and it doesn't mean that there isn't things that can be done and money can be put at other places, but talk to them about saving the polar bears. They don't give a fuck about a polar bear. They're in the, they're in the like, what are you talking about? The fucking polar bear. My, my kid just cut herself uh, on this glass. We're trying to find something to eat and you're telling me, trying to talk to me about a polar bear. We don't give a fuck about polar bears. We're trying right. to eat something today. Uh, luckily, we found this, you know, dead animal. That, you know, so that, that's the situation for a lot of people. So I think, uh, and poverty has been drastically reduced. Um, like it was, um, is it the World Health Organization or the UN guidelines? They had like these goals to reduce poverty a certain amount by this amount of time and um, they beat the goal by by years, so there's less and less people living like that. And so my thinking now is, uh, instead of having, like you said, I started like on this like spiritual path of like 
yogic thinking, not just like yoga poses and stuff, but like yogic thinking from the time I was a pretty little kid. Uh, um, when I got my first two yoga books, I was 15 years old. It was 1994 and I'd been in like spiritual stuff before then. Um, and um, so I guess it got me to where I am, but there's uh, this guy, Dan Pena, and he's worth like $50 billion or something like that. He lives in this castle in Scotland, which um, I don't think it costs very much more to live in a castle in Scotland than it does to live in an apartment in New York. Like if, if you've ever seen like the breakdown of like right. uh, this, just... this buddy of mine that I, uh, I used to work with, um, he's like, uh, he was like reading this thing off and he was like, one bedroom, 600 square feet, or like 600 square feet. So he's like uh, this um, apartment listing in New York and the price of it for what you get. And then he's like, and then, you know, the price like five grand a month or whatever. Um, and then he says, okay, now this other one, 14 bedrooms, seven baths, three right. acres. Same price, it, it's the same price for yeah. a cat. In, in Scotland somewhere. It's all about like location, right? I mean, yeah. or this value of money that we put on things arbitrarily for some reason. Yeah. So, yeah, but my, my, uh, my thinking is like, okay. Oh, but anyways, so Dan Pena, I was watching him on London Reel and then um, on YouTube, then he popped up on Joe Rogan, which I saw it before, but he was like, I've never paid a bill with Zen. And it was like, okay, so you could say like, he's like this, um, like the guy on London Real, Brian Rose, who's like, if you think of like something that you have a problem with in this world, Daniel, Daniel Pena is probably it. He was in the oil business. He's, he's like talks, he's, he has no filter at all. He'll make fun of people, call them cunts. He'll do this stuff, but he's trying to like, he does it because he cares. He wants you to like break through from, like these limitations that you have and right. he has like this, yeah. um, not that you want to adopt his personality. But it's like, he never paid a bill with Zen. So anyways, um, when I, when I look at people talking about how we need to, um, you know, this is mother earth punishing us. We need to like get rid of like, it's, it's these rich people's fault that we're in this right. situation that we're in. It's, and I'm thinking, it's the rich people that are saving our asses. You, you know, yeah, there, yeah, there's, there, there's going to be some corruption and, and depending on. Uh, What's even rich. I mean, at what level is that? I mean, you and I have talked about this before. Yeah. It's like, am I rich? I'm, I'm in hey, the 1%. Am I, but I'm not that rich. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, compared to, probably you're rich compared to a huge percentage of the world. If it's I'm a one on, percenter. Huh? I'm a one percenter. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, I guess that's where there's these breakdowns between this ruling elite that is not there. All the world's money. I don't think you or I are quite there, Not even um, close. but it's, but it's still interesting. The whole construct of money and the idea of what, what is rich and what does that mean? And to your point about the rich people are, saving us if you will again rich people with some amount of money i think that's been really highlighted right now because so many people that can't work um are realizing that well with people not being able to work we can't now buy your services we can't buy the cars we can't go to the restaurants we can't um go to the retreats we can't take the classes um so it was always people with money fueling people that were trying to make money by saying, oh, I left my corporate job. I'm not part of that system anymore. I, I left to live my dream, you know, whether that's living in a van and, and doing YouTube or retreats or, you know, selling something in a shop or doing online training or writing and speaking, we still had to make money. I mean, the whole construct is, I mean, we really all are churning cogs in that system and to me this being like this worldwide shutdown it's that's what i guess i was saying at the beginning it's like well now what the rich won't be able to continue to save people 
because who are they? The ruling elite or people like me who have a, a good salary in a diagnostics industry. I, I get to work from home right now. My job hasn't been impacted, um, but it will be. I mean, for, for example, right now that the testing's being given away for free, my understanding, none of our reps can go into the hospitals to sell more tests. All of the routine procedures and testing that hospitals and laboratories normally make their profit off of have all been shut down. How will the hospitals even remain funded? How will the diagnostics companies or the pharma companies be funded if nobody can work to pay for the drugs or for the tests or if the tests aren't being ran? So eventually we're gonna realize we are the they. I mean, it's maybe there's this 1%, not us, the 1% ruling elite that's reptilian or whatever the theories are, okay. But I don't feel like that's the majority of what people are angry about when they're frustrated or angry about money. They're talking about the 1% you referred to, where it's like you in the US and your apartment with your income, it's still rich compared to the people that throw their trash in the river and drink that same water. Yeah. And so it's, it's like a unsustainable construct part of the toxic competition and the toxic lack matrix. I mean, this idea that you have to strive and earn everything. Um, oh, you see my heater kicked on. I have my windows on. Uh, I mean, okay. Oh, yeah. All good. Um, I just realized I've probably had it on all night, and <laughs> part of my part of my privilege, I can have my okay. heater on and the windows open. Center hater. <laughs> yeah, with my. Uh, but I, I guess. Seven hundred square feet of luxury here. Right. <laughs> I guess. Um, in some ways, I agree with you. Your comment about the the rich quote unquote, are saving us. But ultimately, I think that that construct, everything I just said, same thing with oil. People are mad at that they're the them. Big pharma, they're the them, the they. That's the oil companies, the car companies, the whatever. Well, the auto factories are shut down. So now we're realizing, well, who, who were the essential people for that they? The people that were working in the factories complaining about them. Because yeah. now they're not paying them and, and maybe they're angry or frustrated and say, no, well, it's not affecting the CEO. It's not affecting the rich people, the, the white collars. Well, maybe not yet, but if we're not, if you're not there making cars and we can't go to the dealership and buy cars and we're running out of money to do it anyway, then eventually those people will be impacted too. And we'll realize it wasn't them. They're just regular people too. And how about oil? Well, if we're not driving our cars. Yeah. And they have a lot more financially to lose. It, it, uh, it, it's easy for them to slide backwards too. So even if they right. are living in the castle in Scotland, then um, they, they can still start going backwards since they have, you know, they, yeah, it's kind of all. Well, you know, My big question that I wonder, and I've shared this probably with you before, it's just even more heightened now. I think, you know, I mean, when did we meet? Like three years ago almost? Even then, the, the whole construct of money for me was something that was messing with my psychology. Uh, and so I just don't see, I guess, um, how we would want to fix it or go back to it. it. It wasn't working and we never got to experience um, what the human experience, I guess, not to use the same word twice, but 
would be like if we were really stepping into our divinity or to your point, you know, jokingly Lord Ryan or the return of the mystic. I mean, I think you're onto something there that, that is happening, not just with you, not with me. And it does sound, we almost have to laugh if I were to say, yes, I've, I am now a goddess. Although women are allowed to say it. If men started going around saying they were gods, now then they would all be misogynistic assholes, of course, but Talk some woman. Masculinity. Huh? Right. Oh yeah. If you have, if you have a penis, you can't be a god. Sorry, only, only, only vaginas. Um, anyways, but my my point, I mean, for the sarcasm, but the point is like, what if that is what's happening? Because now we're we're forced to, even if we are getting a check from the government, even if, however, we're sustained because we don't have to pay student loans or we don't, can't be evicted or we don't have to pay our mortgages for a certain amount of time, will we be able on a mass level go in, go within literally and go, okay, well, what would I be doing? We've all had the excuse. We don't have time. We don't have money, blah, blah, blah. We can't. Now it's like, no, you can't because you're stuck by this whole thing that's happening. No matter what you believe about the conspiracies or truths, it's, it's happening. So, maybe now's the opportunity for us to to dream big about well what could life look like if i didn't have to go back to that job that i was just doing for money or if i didn't have to worry about you know podcasts or your fitness stuff you did it just because you love it i'm not saying you don't do it because you love it now but you didn't have to worry about money you don't have to worry about monetizing it you're just like hey man i'm this expert god when it comes to wilderness and survival and weight training and you just taught people that because that was your natural god-given source inspired you-ness your expression of consciousness and what if for me it's like i mean i really like to just garden and cook and i'm a pretty good cook so why not that be what i do and then and like you know it's not a it's not a monetary exchange it's people really doing what they love and some people that's going to be actually healing. You know, they're not going to be a doctor or a nurse because of the money anymore. It's because they're gifted as healers or even the, the mystics that are healers, you know, using more of a um, energy medicine or whatever as healing. I mean, I, you could go on and on with examples. What if people, I mean, what if there are still cars in uh, the people that are there working on them just genuinely love it. It's not about, oh, it's the best I can do. I got in with the union and now I'm set. It's like, no, you, you, you build cars because you think it's badass. Just a total reshuffling of how to exist. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. If everybody can do what they want and you know, it still seems like it would come down to money because um, if I have, if I'm a trainer, but I don't have, um, I need to get some food and you have some food, but you don't really want my training. Well, then how do I get the food? So if I can charge somebody else something like money, a kind of energy energy is money so if i can charge okay i'll charge 70 an hour i can get some energy in the form of money from them and then when i come to you and i need some potatoes then i can just give you that energy and then so it's like it still seems like eventually money will come back into it to uh, because it gives us more options so the more money somebody has the so like when, you know, these people that have like millions and millions, billions or whatever, they have more options. Uh, so I'm like trying to think about it from, from how I'm trying to like change my thinking, which uh, uh, well, I'm trying to see more like instead of like reading more yoga books, which I'm still doing. I, I have I listened to a lot of audio books on the, the library app. Um, and so it's still like, there's like a, a Buddhism one I'm listening to, um, Jordan Peterson, which isn't, it's, it's kind of spirituality, but kind of everything. But he talks about how 
you know, the, the apocalypse has been going on forever. Right. Like it's always the apocalypse for somebody mm -hmm. and for like groups of people. But so if I'm like looking at, okay, what in my life? Okay. I've got like the, you know, the, the Zen thing, the yogic thinking stuff, the practice, that kind of stuff. I'm pretty good at that. But then there's always been like this business stuff that I've always been like trying, but it's like, why is that so hard for me? Like where it might be like pretty easy for somebody else to make a lot of money. It's always been um, somewhat elusive to me. It se seemed like my efforts don't pay off in the way it seems like they should. It seems like there's always something that pops up. So as I was telling you about before I started selling stuff on, on eBay. And so I'm like, okay, cool. And it started going pretty well for me in, in a short amount of time. I recorded a couple of videos, how to make money selling stuff on eBay. And then, so like things are going pretty well after, I think it was three weeks, I got a performance increase, uh, which means I can sell more. Cause if you, when you start on eBay, um, you can only sell like 10 things or a thousand dollars worth of stuff. They want to make sure you ship stuff out. They want to make sure you're not a scammer. Uh, and then they bump you up a little uh, bit by bit over over each month mm -hmm. and then you can get into selling a million dollars a month or more millions of dollars a month but it takes time to build it up so i called to get my i had my account for two years but never used it until just recently so i started out before i sold anything i was able to list 30 things or like thirty five hundred dollars worth of stuff and uh so i started that and things were selling and then I got a performance increase, which means I was basically, which um, when I talked to a customer service person, she said that was pretty rare. She doesn't see that very often. So I, I got bumped up to being able to sell like 170 things or like $17,500 worth of stuff per month. So did and that then, change with everything? Like now all of a sudden you see people aren't buying? Um, like it's been impacted in the last 10 days or so with everything shutting down? Well, what changed is where I had the pla the places where I was getting stuff are closed. So for instance, um, my last, not my last sale. Um, so I sold a pair of shoes yesterday, um, which I, I, that's kind of like a, little, a different moral in that story. But uh, so a couple of days ago, I sold a pair of shoes for $145. I paid $5 for them. So I paid five bucks for a pair of shoes at what I'm now keeping a secret as a, a secret location, I paid five bucks and I sold them a couple weeks later for 145. Mm -hmm. um, on the more expensive shoes, I have another pair of shoes I'm selling for 205, I think. And so on the ones that are real expensive like that, I made it so I had free shipping where normally I charge the buyer. So I have a <clears throat> provocative question for you. Yeah. Or I think it is provocative in that pointed might be a better I can't imagine from what I know about you that you would ever pay two hundred dollars for a pair of shoes I don't imagine you would pay two hundred dollars for a pair of anything unless it was worth a thousand so going back to the construct of money and who decides what value is and um being ruled or controlled by it I guess how can you consciously justify that sort of energy exchange? Not to say that it's not, ha I'm not um, accusing you because it, it happens everywhere, right? It's how profits are made. But so it's not like just you, Ryan, are choosing to do that. That's the nature. Why of didn't it. I, you mean, why didn't I buy them for five and sell them for 10 or why did <laughs> What do you mean? Like what's I, I guess just you always seem like a deal finder to me. So to me, you would be the one looking for or saying or calling out why is a pair of shoes $140 in the first place? Or, you know, if something went on sale at the store and you buy one, get one free, I could just see you being one being like, well, how, I mean, if it's worth, 
why you know, I can pay twenty dollars and get two and instead of forty dollars to get two, you you seem to strike me as a kind of person that would be like, well, it wasn't worth what's it, you know, they're still not losing money. What's it really worth? I mean, always just kind of wanting a deal, but yet on the other side of it or the flip side of it is oh, we're all and it's not just you, but that that's my point from the collective consciousness. It's but you gotta figure out how to make a profit. How can you have more of that energy? And we're doing it to each other. Well, people have options. So I'm not, I don't have a monopoly on shoes. So the pair of shoes that I sold there, um, they were Quoties, Q-U-O-D-D-Y. I'd never heard of them before, but they were new. Um, you can tell they were, they were, they've never been worn. Uh, they knew on the website, they're $295. So... <clears throat> I, since I didn't have like the tag or the box or anything, I originally had them for 245. Um, so $50 off of less than what you would buy them from their website. Then I lowered it to like 205. And then somebody made me an offer of 145 and I accepted it. So, but I don't have a monopoly on, on the shoes. I have shoes over there. I have a bunch of shoes now. I have some that I'm selling for like uh, 20. I think there's a pair that I'm selling for like 18. They're like almost new, pretty new, um, like Lucky brand women's like boots. Um, but they're all like in really good shape. I only get really good ones. And so if people want the more expensive ones, they can get them. I'm flexible some people just pay right away they pay whatever i'm asking some people want a deal <laughs> but um so and, and for instance people it's, it's like it's what people want so yesterday i sold a pair uh for 31 dollars johnston murph i forget the name of the brand they're right over there but they were to a guy in brazil uh the country brazil so you feel justified because you're like, in other words, if the store can sell them for two forty five dollars and it's the exact same pair of shoes, and you happen to find them for five, what what's wrong inherently with you selling them for one forty five? You still lost whatever a hundred bucks. I don't remember the first number I said. So that's why the construct of money? I mean, would you be selling shoes? Would you be going and thrifting and selling things if you didn't have to? In other words, if, if you could get the potatoes because you taught me some more kettlebell moves, <laughs> would you be selling shoes at a markup from a thrift store? You know, do you love it or are you doing it because you have to eat? It's like a, survi like a survival mode or something. So I ended up, so, I sold the sh shoes for basically half of what, if you want the pair of shoes, you want some new quotes. They have Vibram soles. They have, um, um, and you know, they weren't the only option. So they, I basically ended up letting them go for half of what they would be on. I wanted the, the, the I wanted the sale. He wanted the shoes. Um, so I don't have a problem. Uh, and when I see other uh, resellers, because I watch a lot of videos on, on YouTube, um, several different resellers, and they will talk about like what they sold that day. They'll say, I paid uh, $4 for this. I just sold it for 29 Thank you. Sometimes it's they'll say the name of who bought them because it's a YouTube friend. And they're talking about, yeah, I paid $4 for this. I sold it for 40 And the people are watching it's okay for them to make a profit because we want to, um, it's just, it's okay. It doesn't mean like profit isn't like a, a, a dirty word. And so for instance, this pair of shoes that I sold yesterday, I had it like my eBay settings. So I just sell to the United States. I got sent a message by this guy in Brazil that wanted a pair of shoes. The, the shoes I had for sale were $31. Okay, it's another pair of shoes. I paid five bucks for them. Okay, and if you, um, so uh, he asked me if I'd send them to Brazil. I said, I don't really ship outside of the country because there's a lot of scams. 
Mm-hmm. And he, once you start selling on eBay, you get scammers and stuff trying to. So um, I didn't bother. I asked a buddy of mine who um, was very successful selling stuff on, on eBay. And he's like, oh, I wouldn't do it. And so the guy sends me, so I just said, sorry, I don't, I don't ship to uh, other countries. So he sends me another message yesterday, like a week later. He's like, why don't you sell to Brazil? He's like, he's like, I buy stuff from the United States all the time. And I looked and he had a hundred percent approval, a hundred percent satisfaction as a buyer. And, and I kept thinking, well, why, why don't I sell them? If the guy wants them, he can't get these in Brazil. Well, it turned out if he, he could get that kind in Brazil, but they cost a lot more because of taxes. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, I set my, I put the settings that I can sell to Brazil. I was like, go ahead and buy them. If there's any problem, just let me know. And I'll, I'll ship them out. I'll, I'll, I'll send them out Monday. He's like, cool. Thanks. I, I appreciate it. He's like, I, I buy from America all the time. He paid $31 for the shoes and over $40 for shipping. So it's his choice. I didn't, you know, it wasn't his only choice. You know, it's what he, he, he wanted. They're a nice pair of shoes. Right. Um, well, did I, I guess I, I wasn't, I guess I did ask you specifically, but wanting to kind of go down the rabbit hole with the question, I guess, more than anything, it's not that you were wrong. I mean, every, everybody, that, that's, that's the construct of money, buy low, sell high. I mean, it's capitalism 101, right? Um, and I would say that's what's, sell, that's what's bringing more people out of poverty than ever, than the world has ever seen. It, it right. is capitalism. And, and, and I'm not, um, I guess sometimes it seems like the political stuff it's like we argue about current constructs. Is capitalism better? Is socialism better? Is communism better? Whatever the isms are. Um, democracy. Uh, and, and what I would like to encourage thought leaders to, to do is to reinvent the construct. So it, you mentioned something like money is a form of energy and because of the the sort of matrix or construct we're in of lack meaning we are all having to work for there's not enough i'm not enough i've got to do more be more sell more say more um to have more and not necessarily even have more stuff sometimes it's to have have enough to be, you know, to feed your kids, to feed yourself, to clothe yourself, to have shelter. All of that's this, this survival script that's been going on in humanity for a really, really long time. And so pause there. Then at the same time, you've got this whole group of spiritual people and whether they're, you know, the crystal whatever new agey which is really ancient lines of thinking like you mentioned before this religion because it's mother earth we're hurting or it's christians saying god's mad or not not all christians would say that by the way but some of the the what the media highlights or what we think about it but anyways yes old story god punishing us for not right so it's like this punishment this lack this and i want to show you this like look what i had written on my um I don't know if you can see it, but maybe not. I can read it to you. Ah. But it says our addiction to suffering cannot be healed by our addiction to punishing, nor can our perpetual victim be healed by our perpetual fear. And that kind of just came to me, I don't know, randomly the other night. I think I woke up and wrote it because of everything we're talking about right now. I mean, it, it is this punishment versus suffering, fear, lack, victim, it happened to me, that A, we've bought into, and B, well, I mean, it is it has kind of been reality. Whether you're financially successful or not, we've been taught you gotta work hard, you gotta do this, you gotta strive, you gotta 
there's constantly something outside of you that you have to become or be. And it seems we've forgotten the aspect that says, and yet all of that is, I, I'm already right in this moment enough and have enough. It's my addiction to suffering or punish, punishing or fear or lack that tells me I've got to keep doing and haggling and working. And that's where we are today. I mean, th those are real constructs of today, March, whatever it is of 2020. I'm saying with coronavirus, with the pandemic of fear or virus or both, and the economic system shut down in the entire world. So like we're all in the sinking ship in a way, it feels like, because the world's economies are collapsing and blah, blah, blah. So as we're in this ship together, what could we as thought leaders say, okay, this isn't working. This old paradigm, this construct isn't, it wasn't working, it wasn't sustainable. Um, we, we heard more and more uh, of the divide between the rich and the poor and the lack and all the political rhetoric. So I guess coming outside of all that and now like imagining ourselves looking down at earth from our divine mystic truth that's also true in this now, what can we breathe life to? What could we create as creators not the not the how the what we got to learn to dream outside of this construct not to say that the construct's not happening but why not because that's energy too thoughts are energy emotions are energy words are energy the money stopped it's kind of just there in this weird interlude of what the fuck is going on <laughs> and what's next so i would love to just encourage people to really take a pause from the fear from the oh my god what am i going to do for money oh my god how do i monetize this now i can capitalize maybe that's true too but balance that with dreaming like a child again i mean christians would say that god said you come to me with faith like a child and some of the spiritual stuff would say, get in touch with your inner child. Often the things we do are based on wounded inner child. There's something about going back to this childlike wonder and comfort of just living in La La Land. That playing make believe could create a different reality. Or are we powerless? Are we walking around saying we're gods, goddesses, we're resurrected with Christ, where whatever your bent is, it doesn't matter. There's an element, a, a large mass of people that believe in something bigger than just us and, and that we have access to that. That there is no more fear, there, that it's love, it's, it's safety, it's a heaven on earth, but yet we're just sitting here going, oh, we're fucked. How can I make money? I mean, what am I going to do? I, we, we've hoarded everything. We've bought groceries for 10 years, you know? Yeah, I think there's, there's, well, there is these natural laws. Um, and sometimes call like the Matthew principle or priorities law. What's that? Well, it's like basically to uh, like Matthew principles, like to those who have everything more is given and to those who have none, all is taken or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's not just like. Is that because it was said in the book of Matthew and the Bible? Yeah. Right. But it's also like a, a natural law. <clears throat> um, not, not just in the Bible. Priorities law. Or pr it's almost like the law of attraction too, right? I well, mean, it's like, okay. So if when, when you play monopoly, Okay, yeah, there's four of us playing Monopoly. We start off with exactly the same. But what happens? Is it just like, does it, it doesn't stay the same the whole time. It ends up being one person that ends up wiping everybody out. Everybody, and then you have one winner. We have one person that starts to dominate. And then everybody's like mortgaging their stuff and they're borrowing and I'll trade you this for this. And fuck me. And it's, it's this one person, it's a natural law. 
Well, it's all based on money though. Well, yeah, but it's also, it's also um, um, stars, you know, like in the, in the universe, like solar system stars. Um, uh, it's, it's like a natural law. Mm -hmm. So whether you're talking about monopoly, like actual like stars, the bigger ones collect more. That's what that's what happens. The bigger ones like. But we are stars, star seeds. So that's what I mean. Maybe that's a law, but we are experiencing it from a perspective of lack, which says some other star, some other thing has a better, stronger grav gravitational pull than I do, or is somehow figured it out and I haven't because I don't have as much money. And then we tend to value our success based on how financially successful is such is an endeavor, right? I mean, that's the number one metric of success is the financial impact or followers and views same thing though it's i need more of it and and because the followers and views that's what ultimately makes it monetizable yeah. so it's let me uh, let me look this up just let me, this is yeah driving. hey why don't can you pause the recording for a minute yeah okay yeah so what i was thinking was okay it's not like i'm like preaching this business and success stuff from my castle in in scotland or uh so I, and it seems like uh, like when things start to go well for me there's like something that just like okay i figured out this resale thing i have my sources i'm going and buying stuff almost every day things are selling uh things are going great three weeks into selling on ebay they give me a, a a performance increase, which means I can sell a lot more things in a short amount of time. And, and then now they're all closed. Okay. Well, fuck. So now, um, but it doesn't mean, um, that, so who's, to, who's to blame for, for that? Like, do I need to like, Okay, all of you, everything else needs to change because I'm staying the same, damn it. Everything else needs to change to make me more successful. Every, everything, laws of the universe, rich people, poor people, I need everybody to change because I'm struggling. Or is it like, okay, that's not working. I can't just like wallow around in, in misery. I need to like, took a shot on the chin Okay, that sucks, and I'm back upright. I'm I'm ready to go. I'm ready to fight some more. So now so you're said, in fight or flight constantly. Well, yeah. So what what I did was instead of uh, going to my sources, walking indoors <laughs> to to get my stuff, I started doing on getting stuff from online auctions, and it cost me more. So instead of paying five dollars for a pair of shoes, I paid fifty five dollars for three pairs. So I just stopped there because I have to learn um, a new way of, of doing things. I'm like, I don't know if this is a good decision or not. Um, I can't actually, I can see pictures of the shoes. I got two out of the three pairs. One of the pairs is like from a different place. They're closed now because of uh, COVID. So I don't know when I'm going to get this pair. I should be able to make a profit, but it's not as much as, as if I was getting them for a lot cheaper. So I have to like learn. But it, so if it wasn't for the construct that we have now, we would have been wiped out by polio. But it's, or uh, one of the other. But uh, what, about the, what about the idea of, like, like you just said, so you tried something, you were selling, you got an increase or whatever status change, and then that's not working now because places are closed. So you don't just sit there and go, oh no, when will those places give me money? When will those places open back up? When will, you know, like you said, the punisher or the, the victim or the fear, I mean, the, the quote I wrote or we talked about, instead you say, okay, well, what's a new paradigm? So that's on the micro level. 
if you look at this whole phenomenon, which basically the whole world just got shut down so they can't sell, resell stuff anymore. I mean, to, to use your metaphor, your analogy, I mean, this, this exact thing is happening to everyone. If everyone says, okay, how are we going to look in these shut down stores and figure out how to make it work and still eat and still have this exchange of money and energy when that way was shut down and it doesn't currently work? How are we going to go back to it? Well, that way wasn't really working because supposedly the rich were getting richer and the poor were getting poorer. So we know that that doesn't work. Therefore, collectively, we need to say, well, what are our new options? Like you're pivoting and saying, okay, I can't go into the stores. What else could I do? And so what I'm saying is, can we collectively say, you know, when you think about it, do you even want to be doing whatever you were doing for money in the first place? Do you want to have to do it for the money? Is there another way, another system, bartering, um, everybody has enough, not feeling the sense of lack, feeling the sense of competition, feeling the sense of separateness from family, from, I mean, the Western lifestyle is very strange in that way because we just, you're 18, you, you leave, you go figure it out on your own, you struggle, you try to make ends meet, maybe you'll get lucky. I mean, people, you know, maybe they want to be musicians, maybe they want to be basket weavers, but they don't, they choose to, to be doctors or engineers because it makes more money. So what if this opportunity is a, an opportunity instead of going, oh no, I've got to, I got to be agile. I got to be quick. I got to continue to be in my left brain where there's competition, where there's plans. And we take the opportunity to, to sit in this creative space, to turn that part of our divinity back on, that part of our balance back on to say, what if I just today for a week even could do whatever I wanted and I didn't have to think about money. And I wasn't, you know, and it just was like, what's wrong with meditating on that for 10 minutes a day of just giving ourselves a break from that feeling of lack and, um, survival and moving into you know like higher chakras or whatever where we're like in the heart there is enough there's always enough there's more than enough we've just believed for so long that there isn't yeah there was this um i'm not saying you're wrong i'm fully aware that you're a hell of a lot smarter than me in in some ways oh. so you could so you could say something and I don't even get it. I, I know that that's a, a fact, just like I might have some advantages in some areas o over you. But there's this uh, <clears throat> quote. We're not in competition. We're in collaboration. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not like, um, let me find my, what was Facebook all. Did you say that because you don't feel like what I said made sense to you? Or were you just making um, a rhetorical comment? Uh, I don't, so I'm on, uh, I just got on, okay, like my Facebook thing changed for some reason. I was trying to click on my profile, but it was, um, there was this quote, I'm almost there. Um, let's see. Um. Well, I might have deleted it because sometimes when uh, the comments get too wild on my, um, Facebook posts, I just end up deleting them. Um, it's like one guy, um, It's so like, this wasn't the one that I was looking for, but 
um, the most basic fairness contributing to the efforts that produced what they want to share escapes them completely. That's Thomas Sowell on, um, uh, on uh, thinking people deserve what others have. So like, there's a lot of the left, the rich people need to give to them. Like, they need to take from the rich and give to the poor. Um, and they're not understanding the, the basic, because it's not fair. So not, they don't understand the basic fairness that led to the people to feel like climb. Like people, sometimes people are like looking at like, um, you know, these, what, what is called essential jobs, which has led to um, uh, some people saying, you know, like people that are like stocking shelves. It's like, it's not, almost anybody can stock a shelf, you know, compared to, um, you know, like sell tickets to a basketball game. Do you want to just watch some random uh, people, just pick uh, 10 people, five on five, do you want to watch them play basketball? Are you going to pay $50 to watch them play? Um, just like some random people, just like go down, all your neighbors playing a game, are you going to pay 50 bucks? Or, but would you pay 50 bucks to watch Michael Jordan play? Hell yeah. I'm going to pay 50 bucks, maybe not now, but in his, in his prime, see like Michael Jackson or Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, that's another um, good example of um, that law that I was talking about. Um, uh, where it's, you know, think of all the people that are musicians and um write books it's like a very small percentage of them take most of the money because it's like the, the top one percent of the top one percent or even less like you go to the airport are you going to find some obscure book or are you going to find stephen king books are you going to find the ones that are already but anyways the the quote that i was looking for i, I must have erased it because i think it, it led to a a string of comments that were getting a little too much. So sometimes I'll just delete them. So I'll, I'll quit looking myself. But it was like, um, it's from this Jordan Peterson book that I was listening to. And it was, uh, I'm pretty sure it was a letter. I don't know if it was one of his, that one of his clients or he was like talking about something else, but it was in, um, I took a screenshot of the, of the time signature of the book, audio book, but it was like, um, imagine a man who's with, uh, um, that with, with such resent for his neighbor, um, that, oh, fuck, what was it? Sorry. It's, um, I don't quite have it in my brain. Um, do you remember what your point was with it or I mean, without having the quote? Yeah. Um, so you, you kind of started it with saying that I was smarter than you and I would say things that just didn't make sense to you. And I didn't really understand if it was because something I said didn't make sense or, and then you were started looking for this quote, but. Yeah. Guess, um, let me, give me just a second. Let me. Uh, I'd like to know what you think. Like, not what what you've read about other people, but like when you go within, you said you do a lot of meditating and Zen thinking and nature walks and all of those things. So when yeah. you, what do you? So, um, basically, Oh, okay. I found it. it was farther back than what I thought. Imagine if you can a grown man who harbors in his heart, the most vicious resentment for his fellow man, his own neighbor, who's guilty of nothing more than embodying a superior consciousness of what it means to be a man. So you yeah, have like the, the, the poor guy looking at the rich guy as a bad guy. But what's really going on, if, if they dig a little bit deeper, is he resents that rich guy, mm -hmm. um, not because of what the rich guy is doing, but for the lap, that man feels um, the resentment towards himself. 
Right. So it's like, oh, I'm not as... Um, because he doesn't feel like as much of a man. Right. Because so in, perhaps we've said that what it means to be a man is to make money in this construct of toxic Well, shit. yeah, well, if, if you're asking like, what, what's it mean to be a man is to be, have, be um, you know, independent and useful for other, independent and, and useful to others. Um, so if there is somebody, it doesn't mean necessarily that you're, you're rich, but that your uh, people can de depend on you. Or um, as, you say just just quickly what it means to be a man. Are you defining that as man as in male the sex or human? What 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 was the definition reference? Um, well, I suppose it can go both ways, but in my way of thinking, I'm not going to um, talk about what it means to be a woman. What do I know about that? Okay, no, I, I just like, was uh, curious but, if you were talking, I didn't know if that was your thought or you were quoting someone that said, what does it mean to be a man? Uh, and well, I wondered if they were talking about, like, let's talk about manhood, masculine men, or if they meant like mankind. Yeah, uh, well, in this case, it's- uh, It means man, like- Yeah, because here, here, here is a man okay. who is resentful to, and I see, I see a lot of um, posts where it'll be, a male and he's doesn't like the system the current system because he thinks it's oppressive so he wants money from someone else he wants his student loans forgiven mm -hmm. he signed okay or a, here's, here's or a stimulus check to pay him a you know twelve hundred dollars a month or whatever yeah or wh whatever it is you're like i want this so it's like so to me, that's that's really weak, and it's not like I'm I'm preaching from some uh, mountain of uh, the uh, ivory tower. I've had help. I've had uh, I have my limitations, so it's not like I'm sitting here as a rich guy that's um, uh, trying to preach to others. I'm sitting here from like, okay, here's a kind of thinking. Me sitting here like I'm waiting for my knight in shining armor. Me too. Somebody who's come and save me. <laughs> me too. Who's going to come and save me? It's like okay, well, instead of just save me, me, but it would be fun to go ride a horse into the sunset. I mean, so so I, I see uh, people like just sitting there like pouting about the situation instead of like uh, pouting or almost entitled. They're almost like, yeah, it's about time. Yeah. I'm going to get my free money. I shouldn't like, have to pay my student loans back. Like you signed the thing. Yeah, but I, I think that that's a rabbit hole, Ryan, because, you know, there are some corruptions about how everything costs so damn much money here. In a lot of developed countries, they don't have to pay for their education at all in that way. They, the, the government, the they, wants to educate their people. There are also a lot of places that are communist and want to hide everything from people. So your point, though, is you signed a piece of paper agreeing that you teach me and I pay you. Yeah. And now suddenly the government owes that bill. Yeah. I think that's uh, what you were trying to say. The stuff, um, so I, and I think sometimes we, we get, we're not getting uh, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. If, if anybody can even hold that much um, in their brain anyway, or there's, uh, was it like young Carl Jung said something like, uh, you can tell um, the, um, ed, tell like the um, level of consciousness of a man by how much truth he can take or something oh. like that. But so like we get this thing like in, in Sweden, we have Bernie Sanders coming. Well, in Sweden, they get free everything. We should get it free everything too. And then in that same thing, and, and I, I shared the time signature on Facebook. It's like, here's Bernie. He's talking about how we should be more like Sweden. And then he says, when, when he's questioned about it, he's like, actually, there's um, a lot of, 
businessmen and people from there saying that, that they don't really have that socialism that you're talking about. Things are not. And he said, well, I'm not an expert on the current economy of, of Sweden. He's like, but don't they have free education? So it's like, he admits he's not an expert. He says it, but he still wants us to have free stuff because don't they have free stuff? And I, I'm, I'm, these are like quotes. This but isn't the like- The point was like, as far as this quote of the man being uh, resenting the other man for embodying a more superior consciousness. But are you saying in that quote that more superior consciousness is because he makes more money? It, I mean, it seems be. to me like I guess I'm I'm zeroed in or honed in on uh, what I heard that quote say. It's like there's a lot to unpack with yeah. a levels of consciousness, meaning one's superior or whatever seems a bit egoic, and b that somehow the measure of a man is actually and and not only the measure of a man by worldly standards, but by consciousness or enlightenment or vibrational standards is based on his financial worth. And not that it is, but we live in a society where it feels that way. Therefore, this man resents that man because his he feels emasculated. Yeah. Amazing. So where my where I'm going in, in my thinking is, uh, yes. So as weird as that might sound, like because you're talking to me, like I'm not going to buy a pair of shoes for hundred and forty five dollars. Um, I'm not going to. Uh, I don't buy fancy things for myself. I have a 91 Jeep Cherokee and a 2002 Honda. Yeah. I've never paid more than a thousand dollars for a car. Um, the newest pair of jeans I bought was quiet. It was years ago. Um, uh, I don't buy fancy stuff for, for myself really. Um, but, and I'm looking at like, not just as, as the, like, as, as, like business oh, as a way. What's that? Would you, if you could? Yes. You would buy fancy things for yourself. Well, I don't know. What? Well, so does that mean you? Well, can't it depends what you're talking about. Fancy. Your depends Christed on. consciousness, your Christed being, until you're in a financial position to buy more things for yourself, because that measures your manliness. It's kind of hard to articulate the point, and and, and the difference between. Um, okay, so it's like so like the the ability to deal with the uh, the unknown. So let's take it back a, a couple of years to the Garden of Eden. It's a couple couple of years. Couple of years back, like four or five years ago. So you have the Garden of Eden. It, it's this walled in garden. This place is. Perfect. Well, how did the serpent get there? Mm -hmm. There was always the potential of chaos. So then the the serpent comes in, is talking to Eve, like, "Hey, you know, you can have the knowledge of good and evil." And, and what what's so bad about that? Um, and so she. Eats, eats from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, becomes self-conscious, self-aware. And then she's looking at this animal, a Adam, like, it's like, dude, you need to fucking wake up. Cause she's this self-conscious woman now. Um, she's self-aware and she's looking at this dude, like you need to, you need to advance, dude. And so she's like, eat from the um, eat from the tree. And then he becomes self-aware. And then um, they immediately start to get getting punished, according to that story. Right. Well, and they're um, so then they they know they're naked, and they know they're, they're they become like self-aware, self-conscious. And, and there's two different ways of thinking of self-conscious, like con. So, and if, um, like, what if it didn't happen? Like, so it like had to happen because God, right? He created the fucking place, right? He's like, 
but he put that, that chaos in there. So they're going to have to deal with that. Uh, and so then there, there's all, all this stuff happens and man's going to have to um, labor in the thorns and the uh, thistles or whatever to, to get the food and then the painful childbirth and whatever uh, is, is the consequence of that. So there's like, even in the Garden of Eden was the potential for the unknown, the potential, and, and the unknown is, is chaos, is this chaos. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't have movement, you can't have free will, you can't have any kind of movement without the potential of chaos. So how well can you deal with the unknown potential of chaos? In our world today, well, the more money you have, the better you can deal with the unknown. So if your mom uh, gets, you know, eventually, hopefully it's a really long, 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 long way away, but okay, now she's gonna have to go to a, a nursing home. Okay, that's going to cost m money. That's going to, um, cause it, or, or however, whatever situation that, call, I'm not to just like talk about your mom, but whoever, okay, okay, now it's time for the kids to take care of the parents. The more money you have, the easier, you are to, easier it is to deal with that unknown. Oh, she needs a surgery. Okay, cool. Um, I have the ability to deal with that um, chaos. Um, I can write my name on this square piece of paper. I can swipe my piece of plastic and I can deal with that. Um, I can um, deal with the unknown better, more useful, um, rather than being your, uh, it makes you more of an asset than a liability. So as I'm looking at, um, like my thinking and where it's gotten me, I'm 40 years old, my daughter just had a daughter. That you makes are getting ready to turn 40, aren't you? Uh, I'm you almost already? 41. I'm 40 now. Oh, 41 okay. Next month. So, and Aubrey just had her daughter. Okay, so how can I, what can I do? You're a grandpa? Yeah, isn't that bonkers? When did she have him? Or her, or it? What is it? Girl. Is it a girl? Yeah. Nice. Congratulations. That's Thanks. cool. It, it, it's pretty wild. So, what can I do to be more useful, to be like more self-realized? Am I just supposed to like, uh, you know, sit there on a cushion and quote the Bhagavad Gita? Is that gonna be pretty useful? Or is it like, okay, you need a hundred dollars, got it. Oh, um, um, you, you need this? Okay, cool, I can, I can help you out there. Or um, oh, you need, you don't just need my hundred dollars. You need, um, an extra, um, you need money like for the foreseeable future. Okay. Well, here's how I, I've been building this eBay business. So my, my buddy who I've gotten some uh, guidance from on making my eBay a business where it's not just like, okay, I'm going to sell that pair of shoes. And so the business is like, I sell that pair of shoes. So you can't confuse the product with the business. So I'm, I'm trying to I run it like a business, not just like I'm trying to sell a couple things. Like mm -hmm. it's a business. He has nothing in his eBay store now. He could sell it for $50,000. So this is my friend. This is a real situation right now. Um, he got out of the business, but he ran it so well that he can sell over a million dollars worth of merchandise per month. Um, he has, it's, and it's rare because he has a 100% satisfaction rating, which is rare. Um, he, t he like said like how it's rare after you sell a certain amount of things to have it at a hundred percent. So he ran it like a really smart business for a good while and he can sell his store 
with absolutely nothing in it for $50,000. So, uh, because somebody else can just buy it uh, and you have to go through attorneys and stuff because there's financial stuff involved, like whether it's PayPal and, but anyways, uh, what, what I'm thinking is, okay, and other people have done this too. Okay, I'm building this eBay business. I'm, I'm not even two months into it yet, but it, it's going okay. Going well for how long I've been doing it. I can not just think about, I'm not just thinking about what can I do or what can I make for myself um, I'm thinking, okay, well, what can I pass on? Okay, so when it gets to a certain point and one of my kids, um, they need, maybe they want to, um, the, they, they need a different money path because if you're, okay, so where Aubrey, she was working as a waitress and her guy does HVAC. Um, he works for his dad's company. He works for his dad. Okay, so if, if you're um, a mom, you're staying at home with the kids, okay, can you afford daycare? You want daycare for your six month old? I mean, it exists, but um, that costs a lot. So you have, but what if you could sell stuff on eBay? It's time consuming, or not, not just eBay, but there's all these other outlets. So I could be like, okay, here's a store that I've been developing it's yours. Maybe I can give her the merchandise too. I have a tote full of shoes. I have a shelf. There's shoes. There's clothes. There's stuff. It's part of being the provider. I mean, that's kind of ingrained yeah. into the male. I mean, yeah. traditionally speaking, it's ingrained into men. And you're right. saying that that is why superior consciousness is somehow measured by how successful you are in leaving a financial legacy, large or small, but something that you've said, here's my daughter, now my granddaughter, she's a waitress, she can't, you know, all the restaurants are shut down, plus she just had a baby. How can you as a man be a provider for her and your grandchild? But yeah. to me, it seemed like separate, like in other words, and maybe I'm wrong, right? I'm not trying to be right. I'm also a woman. So I, I come from a, an interesting perspective because I am the provider for my family um, and also a woman. So now, now we can do the exes on sexes talk, right? <laughs> but anyways, um, I guess what I would argue, I don't know if argue is the right word. I would encourage you as a fellow person on this path to assess your inherent worth or value or your consciousness separate from your ability to provide. Not saying the ability to provide or the satisfaction in providing because it's your daughter and your granddaughter and, and I even as a woman, I like to provide for my children. I want them to have you know, I want to help them. I want to feed them. I want all the same things you're saying. So it's really not just about being a man. It's about a, a, par a parental instinct. But I guess what I mean is maybe that algorithm, if you will, or that paradigm can shift if you pause and quote the Bhagavad Gita or whatever, you know, you pause in this meditation, this, this state where in that moment, you are already fully divine. You're already worthy of expanding your consciousness or moving towards remembering your divinity or your, your mysticness or your godlikeness. It's not something out there that now that you have an eBay business or now that you're able to give money to your daughter and your granddaughter, now you've elevated in your consciousness. It's, it's a byproduct of, of realizing that it's an inherent to your incarnation as 
a man on the earth at this time, especially this time now with everything with the coronavirus making it really difficult for lower wage earners to continue to make money. I mean, it'll ultimately affect higher wage earners, but the first hit, does that mean all of those people who were spiritual healers, seekers, Reiki people, um, yoga instructors, whatever, are suddenly less superior in consciousness than the asshole reptilians that were never about consciousness that literally control all the world's money. I mean, that's where I get confused uh, as to how that can be a measure of consciousness when money is controlled by apparently evil people that are pretty low in the consciousness. Uh, maybe not low, because is there even a hierarchy to, to compare, but they're not of the light. They're not of the, the idea of, I want to protect and provide. They want to control and dominate. Yeah, there's that. <clears throat> but it, so there's, there's, a, <laughs> there's a, a, a balance. So it's not, I'm not just thinking, okay, like, well, what can I just give like stuff? So if I, if I die t uh, today, okay, well, um, what can I leave for my kids? There's not much in my accounts. I don't have uh, a whole lot, but um, they could have the store. There's a whole bunch of shoes they could sell. They're all nice shoes. There's however much money and, and stuff. The eBay thing is already set up. I have a gym. Okay. Nobody's going to it right now. Okay. I'm, I'm training people online. How am I training people online? Somebody made this laptop, somebody has, somebody thought of Wi-Fi, somebody thought of this uh, internet system. What happens when that goes down? Then what are we going to do? Well, will all of our consciousness, because we can't, that we now can't provide, will that make us less superior? Well, then we go into d different things. So you, like, so what, what I'm like, thinking of like how we can be useful and, and how people are um, like useful in different ways. So my, uh, like Aubrey had thought about being a trainer before mm -hmm. and I always thought it would be cool to have a place where if she wanted to be a, a trainer, she could learn from me. She could uh, maybe um, kind of shadow other trainers that work at my place. Well, now I have that as an option mm -hmm. right now with the can't really like right now but it, um it won't be long things are going to get back to normal and i think it's because of money and the constructs that we have and the advancements in technology that we're able to take a step back and then go back to to normal instead of just being um like what percentage of people did the black plague wipe out and they're like, cause they have, there's no technology. It's just like, you're fucking dead. You're going to suffer. You're going to die. So are your kids. And you're just, there's nothing you can do about it. And I was like, okay, now we have people working on a virus or I've working on a vaccine. Now we have people working on stuff. We knew about it. We have the technology to know about it. And it's like, oh, these evil spirits are, are getting us. Um, there are still places on the planet, like in Africa. Um, oh, I used to, when I drove a cab, I um, would take this woman. She was from Africa. She was from uh, Nigeria. So she came here not that long ago. I mean, it'd be like a few years ago now, but not that long ago. She came here to get an education and she was, she was working, but she wanted to go back to Nigeria with that education because they are way behind. She said the doctors there at the hospitals, if they don't know what the problem is, they still blame it on bad spirits. Can you imagine going to, imagine you take, someone takes their kid to Riley Hospital and the doctor says it must be bad spirits. It must be God punished. It sounds crazy, but that's the reality that people are, are dealing with. Maybe it's both. 
I mean, there's a lot of scientific thought but, but, that all disease is coming from a, um, its energy as well. It's just in a different vibration. That's how we're able to see it on MRIs and CAT scans and x-rays or... But, they, but it's not a use. There's nothing they can do. When you just say it's bad spirits, I guess you just pray. Well, that's not very useful. We're in... A world. lot of people would argue that it is. I mean, there's millions of people organizing mass meditations and prayers because, or even the ancients, you know, I mean, what's the point of a sweat lodge and all these things that we practice if it isn't useful? I'm not saying it's the only thing. It's I'm not, not saying I don't take medicine or I don't get medical care. I'm saying it's and, it's and healing. It's this and that. And when we try to operate in a, it's only science, it's only modern technology it's only these this side of the brain the left brain or it's only up oh, it's just pray about it hope for the best put a crystal on it you know rub it with some reiki or that a polio vaccine a prayer or say a, that again so or if it's like polio you can either pray or take a vaccine you'd have to have <laughs> You'd have to be crazy not to take the vaccine. No, we don't have to. What, what's polio? Who fucking cares about polio? Well, we don't have to worry too much about it now because we had these advancements before. Yeah, but I think that brings up a whole nother, a whole other, which you know, I, I probably should go soon because I'm hungry. I haven't eaten. But it brings a, a whole new um, rabbit hole, which is, you know, there there are some documentaries and films out there that say certain people that are own the patent on the coronavirus, for example, are the same people that have stand to profit quite a bit off of another vaccine. And I mean, I'm in the scientific industry, so I understand the science of vaccines from a immune, immunology perspective and why they would make sense. However, there is a multi-million, maybe billion dollar industry for vaccines too. And there are a lot of people that would argue there's nanotechnology and vaccines. There's part of this, you know, reptilian, cold-blooded people that are controlling the world's money and health and whatever. That's part of their, their agenda. They create problems to find solutions to the problems and they profit off of both, whoever they yeah. are. I would argue that the large majority of the human population, including pharma execs, big diagnostic execs, are just normal people like you and me. I mean, maybe they make more money and they're in a different, you know, they, they have a different lifestyle, a different vernacular. There's differences, but they're just people. They were born, they had childhoods, maybe they were well off always because their parents had money doing whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't think they're the they. I genuinely think that those places, because I work at one, believes it's filled with people that believe they're doing the right thing, that are chasing drugs to treat it, that are chasing tests to test for it, that are, in fact, now chasing um, vaccines to prevent it. And I would argue that every one of those people that I are my coworkers or colleagues in other companies in the same industry believe they're doing the right thing. Or they may be kind of scratching their head going, something doesn't make sense. I think we're all starting to wake up to like, hold on a minute. The thing that's sad is that people that are lower on the uh, economy scale think that they are the they. Now we hate each other. And to, back to your quote of this superior, they resent because there's a superior consciousness because we have this construct put on us that says money is, and your ability to have things or do things are what give you value. And for a long, long time, we've all bought into that. I mean, women go to college to get their MRS degree, men have to provide, you know, the men with the money tend to get the women. What's blah, blah, blah. MRS? Mrs like to get married to somebody you go to find oh. a man that can yeah so i mean to me that's that's where it becomes this huge rabbit hole of you can either go down this path of oh my god so we're just we're fucked there's like five different families that control all the world's money and 
I mean, you were the one that even first introduced me to this concept of that being this reptilian, you know, I mean, there was like this cosmic thing that you introduced me to, um, that I've obviously, you know, seen videos and thought about ever since. I remember at first I was like, all right. I mean, and I still remain okay. And what about the teachings and the downloads and the dreams and the things we get when we go into ancient medicine or why did we go to sweat lodges? I mean, we're trying to step into our own unique divinity, right? That ultimately says light wins or love wins in the big scheme of things. It doesn't mean shit's not getting real and that there's not a lot of toxic, terrible things that are happening, but all that was prophesied in most religions, most schools of thoughts, non-religious, ancient texts, ancient Indian prophecies. Um, so to me, we're at that time in history, um, whether it's perpetual and it's been Armageddon multiple times, doesn't matter. We're here right now in this illusion of time with an opportunity to remember our inherent power and that there are most people that could awaken and come to this idea that we don't have to live like that anymore. And we just have to realize who is this real enemy. And then we get into duality is, is the snake eating its own tail or something. I mean, you, you are the one It's interesting that we have these strange, it seems like almost different perspectives because Ironically, you are the person I think I first, I mean, remember when we first met, we had these like rabbit hole conversation that was like, whoa. <laughs> I just, yeah. I, I guess I would just encourage as we kind of wrap up is that we, especially men, I would love to encourage like, is that the feminine side? Is that why this whole divine feminine, this whole goddess thing is crying out to be heard, to be resurrected, to be rising? And I'm not making this about genders. I'm talking about each, that, that essence of God, of energy of source, that aspect of a supposed duality. So while it is important that that, that masculine energy still provides and protects, I, I really believe it's an important call to look in the feminine too, or the, I mean, we call it masculine and feminine, but it's the same as, aspect of the same whole to say maybe, yeah, maybe sitting and praying on your next vision quest about a download or a, or a empowerment that says, you know what, you're already a badass. You're already full of power and wisdom and those answers will come to you in a present moment versus perpetually being in this fear or victim or fight or flight, or I've constantly got to be hunt or gatherer, you know, maybe that's the aspects of the toxic masculine that we're saying need to come into balance. Like, yes, and provide and protect and trust your divinity, trust the ancestors, trust spirits of good. I mean, even in the biblical story, only one third of the angels fell, which means there's two thirds that are good still. And I believe we've just forgotten. I'm not saying mindlessly that we don't need to have a plan, but I would argue that the measure of man is his inherent ability to love and to hold a safe, container of consciousness and it's completely irrelevant like money is actually irrelevant but i understand why you feel that way because that's the world we live in that says that's your value yeah well yeah there's this like the balance of, of it so if you have like the the um like hierarchies are real whether it's, it's values and um people and it even goes to um like jordan peterson talks about like, even in lobsters okay so um uh there's there's the, the hierarchy where you know the, the tough the strongest toughest lobster 
he gets the best place to live. He gets all the chicks and that's just reality. And because the chick lobsters. It's not money, it's not based on money though. You're, I mean, it's based on worth or value or usefulness or, but it's not necessarily based on, I mean, obviously not based on money. Nowhere else do you see money as the collateral in the entire natural world other than with humans. When, uh, when uh, chimpanzee, was it chimps? I think it was chimps. They were um, like taught about money. They were um, taught that you could like pay this money to get something. Do you know what the first transaction that happened was? Bananas. <laughs> Sex. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing the dude monkey got wanted like oh cool uh but what does what does what does that mean so that the it, who, who knows what's going on in their mind but yeah that was i mean it took you food no so, oh, okay so it didn't take long to figure out what it was so the in the lobsters and that's like a, it's like literally there's stuff in our brain so there's it's in our brain. Right. So, it hasn't been programmed though. No, I mean, no. Where did, where did the reptilians, like, are they capitalizing off of what was meant to be a normal drive for life? And, and have, have we been brainwashed? I mean, based on what's going on on TVs or symbols or agendas that have been crammed down our throat for so long you know, is it possible that that's what it means to wake up is to realize, oh, wait, I've been under some sort of mind control or believing in this. And the reality is I'm a powerful, divinely inspired and um, kind of protected being and that we came here to create a new, even if we don't change the entire world, can we change our world? So where I can interact with you as a human and say, you're valuable. I love you because you're human because we're in this together and it's not about how much money you make or are you worth something to me? I mean, that sounds really narcissistic. If we all are agreeing that people's worth is based on their money. Well, it's more than it's, it's more than money. The, but you're talking about like the inherent, like divinity, you could also say, and some of what I'm saying here is is pretty much taken from Jordan Peterson, who I think is the the greatest thinker of, of our time. The way he puts together um, psychology, like neuro neuroscience, mm -hmm. um, myth, uh, religion. Um, the way he puts everything together and what he takes from so many different other um, scientists, philosophers, religions, and puts it together. I, I don't know a, a close second. And, and if anybody knows of something, I'd, I'd like to know. But so you could say like, okay, well, well we're, we're inherently good. We're inherently divine. Say, no, we're inherently bad. Look at what we're doing to the environment. Look at what we're doing to the earth. Look at what we're doing to each other. Look at the wars. We're not good, we're bad. So, uh, and I was just listening to something, like, it might've been yesterday. I listen to him like almost every day, but it's like almost like this circular kind of thing where uh, you can, just as easily you can say like, we're inherently divine and good Somebody else can say, no, we're, we're inherently bad. Look at what we're doing. But so, can it be both? Well, that yeah. is duality. I mean, it's yeah. both. It's giving us the opportunity to be different. So to it's like, stop doing those things to each other, to the earth, to, to fellow humans, right? I mean, I guess that's what I'm saying. I don't know that we're, I don't know that we're in any type of disagreement. I do think it's both. It's, yeah. we've been assholes. And we have the divinely inspired power to stop being assholes. That's how shifts happen. That's how revolutions happen. 
that's how innovation happens. I mean, people say, let's do it a different way, a better way, a more sustainable way. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, the hierarchy, though, in our brain is there. Mm-hmm. It, we have this... Um, we can see it, it goes it's back. Like we have to unlearn, you know? It's not even that, it's like structure stuff. Mm-hmm. So the, the lobsters, when the lobster is uh, defeated, like they'll, they'll have a fight to see who's superior. The one that wins is more likely to win other fights. The one that loses is more likely to lose other ones. When they, their, their uh, posture changes, their uh, like serotonin levels change. So rule number one in Jordan Peterson's 12 rules for life book is stand up straight with your shoulders back. It's this, this postural thing. It changes your brain chemistry. When you, when you see some, somebody walking down the street and with their, when they're standing up straight, their shoulders back. And then you, then you see somebody else slumped forward, just weighed down by life. Like it's completely different. The brain chemistry changes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a literal uh, fact. You can give lobsters um, Prozac. It works. The same way it works in us. So their, their um, brain is simpler than ours. So they, it's easier to study. But we have the same stuff. I think lobsters are older than their like crustaceans are older than uh, trees. I think that uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, so this stuff goes way, way back. Um, so hierarchies are real. So they're not just like a social construct. They are in the brain. It's so natural. Um, it's but it's just biology and so just like um um uh, okay so so hierarchies are, are real so you could say like the uh, conservatives the republicans they understand that hierarchies are real and they're not fighting that and so you could say that and then you have the far left that says, no, hierarchies aren't real. It's a social construct. Uh, we need to uh, remember the poor because the rich are getting richer. That's a natural law. Price is law. Prior to the, I wish I could remember that um, word, prior to something, distribution, um, uh, Matthew principle, whatever. The rich are getting richer. The poor are getting poor. But actually the poor are getting richer. Um, that's a fact. The and they're getting and the rich are getting poorer right now too. Yeah. So, but you have like the the right that's like, suck it up, get a job. What are you talking about? You're sponging off of people. And then you have the left. It's like you rich people need to give the poor people money. So you have these. So the left and the right, uh, because since that law is a nat, it is natural. Whether you're playing Monopoly, whether you're a a star in some solar system, uh, big star, little star, big stars get getting more big, the, the bigger black holes get more, the more. Um, and uh, so then we can say like, okay, but now, the, the, but the left is useful because they're like, okay, this is getting too far out of balance. Now we need to uh, remember the poor. And what, so it's not that like one is better than the other. They're, they're both useful. Um, but it's interesting because it's Republicans, it's conservatives that give more money to charity. And it's not even a close competition, for lack of a better word. So while the left talks about it more, the right actually does more Mm -hmm. so and that's like you can google it and you and 
it, I, I, you, you just won't see anything that. That's why I think it's so important for everybody to just stop. I mean, I don't know the social media and the the press and all that just creates more of this illusion that everything is you know left right right wrong <laughs> and, and you know do do the our 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 really our by na by statistics are the people on the right richer i mean my point in asking the question is it's still not the illuminati or whatever it's still not the ruling elite it's a distraction it's us are fighting against ourselves instead of going within i mean there's supposedly going to be like a media or a, an internet uh, blackout on april 1st i've heard this from q and all these different sources so i'm really looking forward to that because internet blackout it goes away i mean what how would you know any of this if it weren't for i mean you might because you go to the library and you read books and you look for information but most people were sitting at home and the safety of our homes not to argue for the people that are in abusive situations and it's not safe but from the from this big thing we're in the safety of our homes and none of it matters it's just people arguing on facebook and who gets more like likes and, and we've created this perpetual imbalance of power and when obama was in office then you had the conservatives burning black people at crosses and the kkk blah 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 now Trump's in office and you've got these social justice warriors and liberals that are whining and crying and making fun of him incessantly and, you know, doing terrible things too. And it's like, we get the same thing with men versus women. You know, it's like, oh, this toxic tear down the patriarch. It's men are terrible, blah, blah, blah. Well, what was happening was terrible, but the answer isn't for women to hate men. So we can rise up and stand on your shoulders and make you less... Now we're superior, but that's what's happened. I am saying the call to action is to balance. It's just none of it, it's to connect with other humans, connect with yourself, connect in the heart space, which as we know has much more electromagnetic resonance and toroidal field than our brain does. And until people can, can rest in that place and say, what does it, why am I, why do I hate this person? because they support Trump. Why do I hate this person because they support Bernie? Or why do I hate you because you get a stimulus check? By the way, I'm not gonna get one. I make too much money. So yeah, it sucks, but I gotta keep working during this time. I gotta keep paying taxes during this time to fund everybody else. But yeah. I'm not rich by any means. I mean, rich compared to what, to who? I'm not even rich compared to the regular people. When you, when you look at a, a chart of richness. On the other hand, absolutely I am, so are you. But we yeah. sit in our comfortable little American lives arguing about whether or not we should get a stimulus check and blah, blah, blah. And it just keeps mm -hmm. us all from action. And we're constantly consuming other people's thoughts and ideas. Other people, you know, Jordan Peterson or this YouTuber or this, you know, and it's not still not going within. It's still not truly tapping into our own heart, our our um, multi-dimensional selves, our psychic abilities, our the way we used to communicate. How did civilizations work before TV, before radio? What did they do all day? What did they do for money? How did they survive? Not very well. Not as well as we're doing now. Maybe. But that's like, that's kind of like the adage when missionaries go into certain places in Africa or Haiti thinking they're doing a good thing because they're bringing Nintendos and Game Boys because we think that's better. But if you ask their sages and mystics, they would say, no, what's better is to be connected to the earth, to, to, to go hunt and gather, to make your own food. I mean, we've decided that it's better, therefore it's we we force that on them i mean maybe it's better but it does maybe the the quality of life from the standpoint of modern um 
conveniences is better, but is the quality of the heart. I mean, where do, where do actual real medicine men or women typically come from? It's usually like an indigenous culture, right? I mean, those are the people that we would truly say are really tapped into source to God. That's where the real power is. I mean, ultimately, we're just a little planet spinning around in the atmosphere in this huge galaxy amongst galaxies. And to me, all of that is tapped into source or God or whatever. So the more that we're just distracted looking at screens or arguing about the next political thing, the less we are going in, raising our vibration, imagining what we could be doing if the world looked differently. And, you know, maybe it won't ever look different, I guess, but that just feels like defeatist. It feels like, then what's the point? Why live? If it's always just a struggle and whatever, it's like, I don't know, it's a rabbit hole. I guess we could uh, maybe re revisit it later. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Will you stop recording us now? Because 